Going Linux Screencast number two. How to use Audacity to edit a podcast. Welcome to this Going Linux Screencast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. And I'm your co-host, Tom. This screencast episode is the second in a two-part series and is a companion to the Going Linux audio podcast, episodes number 59 and 62, on recording a podcast using Linux. During this screencast, we will be using Ubuntu 8.10, Intrepid Ibex, as the host system, and Audacity version 1.3.5 beta for our examples. We will assume you have already installed the Audacity audio recording and editing software and the lame MP3 encoder on your Linux system. For introductory information on the hardware and software you will need to record an audio podcast, go to shownotes.goinglinux.com and listen to our introduction in episode 59 and our advanced episode number 62. The Going Linux screencast number one on recording an audio podcast is available at screencasts.goinglinux.com. Now that you know how to record using Audacity, let's jump right into editing your podcast. I have recorded my portion of the podcast, and my co host Tom has recorded his. Now that I've received Tom's file, let's open Audacity again. Open my saved project under Recent Files from the File menu. This will be this file. And now let's import the file that Tom has provided to me. Tom sends me his recording as a high quality OG file. We'll discuss how to create an OG file in a few moments. But for now, let's just import what Tom has sent me. From the File menu, select Import, and then Audio. We'll import Tom's recording into our current audio project as a separate audio file. I have already saved Tom's file in the same directory as I saved our original recording project, so I will choose it from the list and click Open. Tom's audio now appears as a second track in my audio project. We count down from five in order to be able to synchronize the tracks. Let's listen to my countdown in the first track. In order to hear my track alone, let's mute Tom's track by clicking mute on the set of controls on the left hand side of Tom's track. Position the cursor at zero by clicking the Skip to Start button in the toolbar and press play. Now you'll Am hear I? my voice only as and I count from five. My levels look good. Five, four, three, two. We'll click Stop at this point since we've located the countdown. You'll notice that you can see in the waveform clearly as I speak the words 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now Tom and I both counted down at the same time, so we'll locate the same countdown sequence in Tom's file visually and play it for verification. This looks like where Tom begins to count. Let's just check it out by playing Tom's track alone. We can do that by muting mine and unmuting Tom's track, or we can simply click the solo button on Tom's track, which will mute all other tracks, in this case there is only one other track, and unmute Tom's track. Having done that, let's place the cursor just to the left of where we think 
the audio recording of the word five is by moving the mouse to that position and clicking on the blue line you'll notice that a cursor appears in that track now we can click the play button to begin playing be my guest and we notice Four, that this is indeed three, Tom counting two, down from one. five so let's click stop now Tom and I both recorded that simultaneously so we want to adjust the audio tracks so that the words five four three two one align with one another in both tracks to do that select the double headed arrow in the audacity tools toolbar this allows you to move a track to the left or right independently of any other track in order to align it with other tracks in your recording you'll notice that the cursor has changed to a double headed arrow and clicking on the track you want to move and sliding it left and right you'll notice that it shifts in time and we can then align Tom's recording with mine so that the words 54321 align with one another. We can test our alignment by unmuting both tracks and playing them to ensure that they're each aligned with the other. Let's oh. do that now. Okay. My guest. 5 4, four three, 3 Okay. 2, two Now that we've one. ensured ourselves that the tracks are aligned with one another, let's save the project with a new name. I like to do this so that I preserve the original recordings in their original state without editing and that gives me the ability to go back to the original recording if I make a mistake in editing. So we'll choose File from the menu and this time we'll select Save Project As. We'll leave it in the same folder but we'll name this one GLP 062 Edits. E D I T S dot A U P and click save. Now we have a new version that we're going to be using for editing. At this point, we can play the audio until we reach the point where I introduce the podcast. I'll okay. Be my guest. A little more. Test, test. That is just about as loud as I'm ever going to get. And it All right. Okay. Going Linux, episode 62. Okay, we found that spot, and everything before that we will need to discard. So, once again, choose the selection tool, which is the button that looks like the capital letter I. Making that selection again allows us to place the cursor where we want it in the audio track. Now I normally like to leave one second of silence before I begin speaking and we'll do that by selecting one second prior to where you see the waveform start to move as I begin speaking. Notice that there is a time track at the top of the audacity window which is marked off in seconds so we'll choose approximately one second prior to where I begin speaking and now by clicking and dragging from one track down and slightly to the left I begin a selection of the audio prior to that point but in both tracks now if I were to delete this section I'd be deleting only about two seconds worth of audio to be discarded. I actually want to discard everything prior to this in both tracks. In order to do that you could continue to drag to the left until you reached zero 
or you can also hold the shift key on your keyboard and press the home key on your keyboard. The shift key continues the selection process and home moves the cursor to the beginning of your audio file. So now we have selected everything from the beginning of the track all the way to within a second of the audio that we want. You can see on the audio selection toolbar at the bottom the length of the audio selection. If I choose the length radio button here, the length of our selection is displayed below in seconds. To actually delete this section of audio, you can choose the scissors or cut button in the editing toolbar or simply press the delete key on your keyboard. Now you'll notice that our original selection just before the recording that we want is now at position zero in the audio track. Now that we've made our first edit, let's save the file again. In this case, let's just choose File, Save Project. Now you may have noticed that as we were playing Tom's audio, that there is some noise in the background. Uh, let's talk about noise. Yes. Uh, we can kill noise later, but you do introduce artifacts when you artificially kill noise. Right. Your voice begins to sound a little wobbly as it's played back if you use software to remove noise, or it can if there's a lot of noise that you're trying to remove. So you want to try to get rid of as much noise up front before you do the recording as possible. Right. Try to get clear of uh, fans, machinery, traffic. Uh, I live near an airport, so that must just drive Larry crazy. So I can't get away from that. Get away from noise if you can. I've heard of people who put a towel over their head. Now, well, I don't think I could stand that, but that's that's a little extreme. <laughs> no, I just I just close the windows and the doors and uh yeah, I'm I'm sure some of our audiences have heard at least one of my dogs barking in the background in some of these recordings. Sometimes you just can't help it. But uh yeah, so you want to stay clear of that. And one source of noise that many people forget about is the computer itself. And that's the one I can't get away from. I get this big old clunky machine sitting right here and only about uh, six feet of cord on the USB cable. So we have to take that out artificially later. Yeah. Well, and fortunately, it's really not all that loud. It is noticeable if I don't remove it in software, but uh, it is removable in software. Right. And another thing is that noise is constant. So it's going to be the same noise throughout the recording. So it's much easier to take it's out. It's much easier to take out. In order to remove the noise, we can do that using Audacity's tools. First, we want to select a segment of Tom's audio where he's not speaking. To do that, let's mute my track, select a position in Tom's track that looks like there is no sound, and play it. Indeed, this is a section that has no speaking. And so let's select, by clicking and dragging, only within Tom's track, a segment of that silence, or the fan noise on his computer, actually. That segment should be, well, half a second or a second or so should do. And in this case, to remove the noise, we select Effects from the menu in Audacity, and choose Noise Removal. Removing noise is a two-step process. The first is to get a sample of the noise. We've already selected a small segment of that noise. So at this point we click the Get Noise Profile button. This allows Audacity to use that segment that we've selected as a sample of the noise. Now we want to remove that noise from Tom's entire track. To do that, we select the entire track. The easiest way to do that within Audacity is to click the gray bar on the left side of the track. You want to be careful not to click where the drop-down is or the X 
or any of the buttons. I find that selecting right where it says 44,100 hertz is a good selection because that's actually not a button but rather just a label. Notice that the entire track appears dark gray. Now to remove the noise from that track, again select the Effects menu and Noise Removal. And in this case, you can simply click OK to remove the noise from that track. You'll notice within the dialog box for noise removal, there are some controls that adjust the amount of noise to remove, the frequency smoothing, and the attack decay time in seconds. I found that the default settings provided with Audacity have worked just fine for me. If you need to make adjustments here, feel free to go ahead and do that. But the defaults work for me, so I'll just leave them set where they are and click OK. Depending on the length of your recording, removing the noise may take some time. Be patient as the dialog box indicates its progress and when it's completed you're ready to continue your editing. Once again I would at this point save the file. Now let's unmute both tracks so that we can hear them played together and as we play the tracks we'll notice that the noise is completely gone from Tom's side Going Linux side of the episode recording. 62. If you have a theme for your podcast, that's theme music, you'll want that already edited section of music ready to go and recorded on your hard drive. That's what we've done and to import that music into our audio project we select File Import Audio navigate to the directory on my hard drive where the audio is stored. It's called Going Linux Ends, meaning the front end and the back end, the opening and ending themes for the podcast. Now you'll notice that our zoom has changed and a quick way to get back to the default zoom, you can use the zoom buttons to zoom in and out of the visualization of your audio or to go back to the default zoom you can press control and the number two on your keyboard and you'll go back to the default which I find most useful for doing the major portion of the editing. Sometimes you'll want to zoom in further to make fine edits and sometimes you'll want to zoom out further to align audio tracks and music with your vocals. Now that we've imported the audio, I already have the appropriate amount of silence at the beginning of the music and we will actually need to extend the silence in the middle so that the ending theme begins at the appropriate time just towards the end of the podcast episode and we'll illustrate inserting silence in a moment or two. But for now, let's align the opening theme to the introduction for the podcast. Once again, I use the double-headed arrow, the Time Shift tool in the Audacity toolbar, to move the theme music so that it begins immediately after my announcement of the title of the episode. Bad. Another now important you know. tool in the Audacity arsenal is silence. This we use to edit out the extraneous sounds like coughs and so on from the audio recording. The way you edit out a cough is when you hear a cough in the audio you'll see the waveform that represents the cough. You can play it and then Using the selection tool, highlight just the cough in that one track. Ensure you've got the entire cough. And now <coughs> use the silence button in the edit toolbar. This removes the cough, reducing the waveform to a single line in the center of the track. 
playing that section once again, we can see that the cough has been removed and we're ready to go. You can do the same thing with ums, ahs, and anything else you want to remove from one or more tracks in your audio. Another very useful tool in Audacity is the ability to insert silence and that becomes useful when inserting sounds, music, and other audio into your final recording. For the Going Linux audio podcasts, I announce the topic, then we play the theme, and then Tom and I introduce the podcast topic for this particular episode. I know that my introduction to the topic and the theme take almost exactly 15 seconds before I want to begin the audio where Tom and I are introducing the podcast episode. You'll notice that in our recording so far the introduction begins earlier than 15 seconds. There is already a bit of silence between the announcement and the introduction but not enough so we will use the Generate Silence feature of Audacity to insert a few more seconds of silence. First using the selection tool, I place the cursor in one of the tracks at a point somewhere within the silence. I choose Generate Silence from the menus and a dialog box pops up that allows me to indicate how many seconds or I can change it to how many minutes and seconds of silence I want to insert into my audio. I make the edits by typing the numbers into the dialog box and then click OK. You'll notice that now we have inserted the appropriate amount of silence into the audio of one track. Now I need to insert the same amount of silence into the second track. I, I again position the cursor somewhere within the silence on the second track. Choose Generate Silence. You'll notice that in the dialog box the same amount of silence we inserted before is already entered so all I need to do is click OK and that same amount of silence is inserted into the second track. Now I like to have the introduction begin slightly before the music is finished just as it is fading out. So I'll trim a little bit off of both audio tracks here and make it exactly 15 seconds. Once we've got the editing of Tom's and my vocal tracks completed and the music in place, we're ready to do the fine-tuning of the quality of the audio for Tom's and my vocal portions. If one segment is slightly too low, you could use the amplification feature of Audacity under the Effects menu to amplify just that piece. Using the Selection tool, select the portion of the audio that you want to amplify, then select Effects, and amplify from the menus. The default application that Audacity chooses brings the selected portion of the audio to an optimal level and that amount is suggested in the dialog box itself. You can increase the volume of the highlighted section by entering a positive number and decrease by entering a negative number. So this is not only an amplification tool, it also serves to reduce the volume as well as increase the volume. Let me enter a number here just to illustrate, then click OK. You'll see that the highlighted segment of the waveform changed its size indicating a change in volume or amplitude and our amplification is completed. Let's just undo that since that's not what I want to do in this case. A better way to process the vocal tracks to compensate for the fact that sometimes we speak more loudly than others and sometimes we might even whisper and yet we want our audience to hear both the high volume and the low volume without making them have to adjust the volume on their audio listening device. 
We can accomplish that by using a tool in Audacity called Leveling. Let's illustrate leveling in our recording so far. Select the track that you want to process, and then under the Effects menu, choose Leveler. You can adjust the amount of leveling in the dialog box that appears. However, I found that the default settings seem to be most appropriate for the Going Linux podcast, so we'll leave them set to where they are and click OK. Waiting a moment for the progress bar to indicate that it has completed the leveling process. I repeat the same step with the other vocal track. Now let's save the project one more time. This time we'll save it as a mix with the name GLP062-mix, indicating this has the theme music mixed in with it. And let's play it just to ensure that both Tom's track and my track are at approximately the same volume when listening to it. Something else you may wish to adjust if you're importing, let's say, audio comments from a listener who has submitted audio by way of a telephone message or a pre-recorded audio file that they have emailed to you. You may need to amplify the entire track so that its volume is somewhere near the volume of the hosts of the podcast. You can amplify everything without leveling it or even after leveling the audio comment by using the slider on the left side of the track indicating a plus or a minus to raise or lower the volume of the entire track. This is particularly useful if the comment coming in from your listener has been recorded using a built-in microphone on a laptop which typically has a very low volume setting and sometimes it's very difficult to hear those recorded tracks. So by raising the volume of the entire track using the slider for that track, you can easily and quickly make an adjustment so that your listener can be heard. Well, now we have completed our tutorial on recording and editing a podcast using Audacity. Although we were using the Linux operating system, most, if not all, of what we have discussed can be applied to using Audacity under any other computer operating system. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Theme music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com.